Hello everybody, this is Goran. And hello in the Lewis. From Effective TDs. Yeah. Um, so today we want to talk about the uh, new TP booleans. Eli made a tutorial about how to use them. Using Shapecutter on the new Drop7, you can find it on Effective TDs. Correct. And one question uh, in Facebook was that why is the VDB creating round corners? Yeah, exactly. So if we if we have a boolean here, so we have taken our logo and just cut it out out of a box. Uh, box. And then if we do a open VDB boolean, the corners get rounded. And to explain that, we thought, okay, well, maybe it makes sense to just explain first what are VDBs and what's happening in the VDB boolean step by step. So we know what's going on inside the shape cutter. Exactly. And what it's doing tip internally. Yeah. So the 3ds Max boolean is just the normal 3ds Max boolean being used. Um, and then it creates, a lot of times it creates like artifacts um, because there's just like, it's creating those n-gons and it's just max not Big liking. Max. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even if we don't subdivide the box, you the boolean will fail. So you need to subdivide the box to be able to create the, um, the boolean. And with VDBs, all this is not happening. Exactly. So VDBs has a different method, and that's why it's very re reliable. But at the same time, it comes with the cost of. The you need to reconstruct the mesh. Yeah. Uh, transfer data. And, and even if you do the adaptive, where is it? There is adaptive value. Uh, it's a number. Uh, Adaptivity there. Adaptivity. You need so zero point zero two or something like that. yeah. Yeah. So we can reduce. There's remeshing of this side to be like less dense, but it keeps the details here. But anyways, we still get around corners. Um, so we're losing detail on our model. So to explain how that works, we thought let's jump into Houdini because in Houdini we can really explain what's happening. So. All right, so here in Houdini, we have, so we have our logo, we have this box, and we're going to do the same thing where we have, oh boy, what is going on now? Ah, of course. And we've... We have our VDB boolean, so we need to be convert that back to mesh. You write VDB, VP. I did? Yeah. There you go. And we convert this to polygons. And there we go, we see the same kind of result. Well, almost the same. Um, where we have rounded corners. And I already announced it, we're converting something back to mesh, so that means we converted it from mesh to volume as well in the first place. So to explain what happen what's happening is, basically we have to convert the, our mesh into our volume. And whenever you con con convert the mesh into volume, it basically um, is limited by the amount of voxels that you give it. So if I select this and I say, okay, my voxel size is 0.1, it's going to go um, with a distance of 0.1, it's going to create voxels here. So if I go 0 0.05, we're going to have a more defined shape, but it's going to be slower. It's going to create more voxels. And thus we're going to have a higher density mesh here. So if I go... 0 0.01. Okay, that one's maybe too much. Oh boy. Don't crash code in Igoran. Let's go 0.5. Come on, and then uh, A to match B. We will see that if we want to keep the detail, we get a much, much higher res mesh. There we go. But you can already see like resolution of this is pretty crazy and then if we go here and change the additivity 0.1 we're getting the same as we saw in max or similar as we saw in max um, where it tries to reduce the meshes on the flat points uh, on the flat surfaces but kind of keep the detail around 
around it's the doing edges. something different, no? Uh, it's slightly different. What's going on with all this? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe the box is not perfectly. It's a box. Yeah, it's a bo <laughs> white box. Well, anyways, whatever. No. No. Always the same. Anyways, so let's have a look what it does internally. So to display that, I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take a volume slice and display this and put this back to point one. Okay. So what we have here is we have our mesh, which is the wide lines, and then we can see that it creates a volume, um, basically a bounding box around the whole logo, and every single point here is a voxel, is representing a voxel. So, <clears throat> um, green means basically a positive value, purple means negative value, if I'm correct. Uh, yes, and negative means I'm inside mesh, and positive means I'm outside the mesh. Now, um, uh, I just had a blackout. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you talked too much, go on. <laughs> okay, so there's two different types of volumes um, or two different, different types of data that you, well, there's more different types of data that you can save in volumes, but VDB gives you by default two, um, two types. One is a distance, an SDF, called sign distance field. So basically that measures the distance from a voxel to the closest point on surface. And then you have the same thing on the outside. So outside are positive values, inside are negative values. So if you like, use a storm or granular solver on effective TDs, you will see that you have SDF and as well it's a signal distance to the, to the mesh. Exactly. So this is a very fast representation of am I inside or outside the mesh and how far am I? So you can see we have um, four uh, exterior band voxels and interior band voxels. So if you look here, we have a 0.4, which is four times 0.1. So every single voxel is 0.1 distance. Um, well, it's not exactly 0.1 um, distance from the mesh, but it's 0.1 distance from each other. And then it tells you the distance in, 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 um, uh, in units um, from the mesh. And because we only have four exterior band voxels, it goes only to 0.4 and then everything else here is just disregarded. It just says like, I'm not going to measure it because I'm already so far away. I'm, I'm beyond my limit. And that is the difference between VDBs and normal volumes. Normal volumes would go and say, okay, I have to, uh, let's turn this off. I have to get the value of every single voxel and calculate and, be, and it would be much slower. While the, the VDBs, they're basically using sparse volumes, which means um, it can uh, ignore data that is always zero or it's just not important. It's too far away from the mesh in this case. So if I would convert this now to a normal volume, to a fog volume, which basically says the value of a volume. So basically um, you can have density, for example, in this case density. And basically it says, okay, I'm inside, I'm white, I'm outside, I'm black, I have zero values. So if I look at the values here, I can see, okay, inside is 1 until I'm 0 0.4, um, uh, 4 times 0 0.1 distance from the surface, and then I'm starting the gradient to grow from 1 down to 0. And you can see the last one is a little bit above 0, and then anything outside is perfect 0. Yeah. So if you look at um, at active voxels in a VDB, so VDB, VDB visualize tree. Actually, we have to do this here. We can see this are um, the tiles and 
wireframe boxes. So we can see these are all the active uh, actual voxels and everything else is outside, it doesn't care about. Now, if you did the same thing with the volume, it would create active voxels all around. It would fill all the voxels. So if we do this from, um, from here and we show the values, um, and uh, so I set this also to VDB, uh, to SDF, sign distance field, but this time it's a normal Houdini volume. And you can see it calculates the values all the way for every single voxels. It figures out how far is it from the mesh. And if I do um, fog volume, it's going to do the same. Um, well, it looks inverted, but oh, inverted. I don't know why that was on. You need to take out the laser scan. It was what was causing the problems. There you go. So we have volume inside our um, our volume, but you can see all the voxels are being calculated. Uh -huh. now, well, it's yeah, and it just gives you zero or one. Um, anyways, so that's the difference between VDB and volumes and. Um, so all that this explanation was to say why we have run corners on TP. Well, that's that's to understand yeah. what it does. No, yeah, it's pretty cool. So now that we have the information, are you inside or outside, and how far from the mesh you are, now we can go to a VDB combine, and basically it says um, this is basically the same as the um, uh, shape cutter, shape cutter in TP. In TP. Uh, we have to switch this back to sign distance field because that's what it works with. And it says, okay, I want to I want to know the SDF difference. So the difference between A and B, and, and that is basically, um, it's, it's A minus B, so to say. Um, now, the, the rounding, of course, comes because we are converting them to voxels. And because to get... Um, if we look at this, to get this sharp corner, we only have a voxel here to display I'm inside and one that it displays I'm outside. And then here's another outside. So it has to round, uh, it has to round that mesh. So if we just keep this, it has to round that mesh because it just doesn't have enough okay. sample information. Mm -hmm. And the more sampling we give it, the more detail we get. But we will get the cost, mm -hmm. yeah more time to exactly. process it, mesh much more exactly. detail. But at the same time, because we're doing this um, uh, first converting to volume and then every every voxel knows I'm inside or outside, the reli reliability of the Boolean is very high. So there's pretty but much no way to fail. Never will fail. Yeah, I, exactly. I never see. Yeah, so that's the quick background. I hope I explained that well. <laughs> Um, I think the big thing here is to actually um, learn a little bit about volumes, uh, fog volumes and SDF, sign distance fields. So one is just the value of saying, okay, what value am I? Just like smoke, like how much smoke is there? Mm -hmm. And the other is the distance be from the surface and then minus value inside, positive values outside. And then the, the difference between volumes and VDBs, which is VDB allows you to do sparse volumes where it can ignore data that is not relevant. Yeah, that's pretty cool because in TP we have VDBs implemented in different ways. Mm -hmm. and now that we know why bands are there, you will see that you have VDBs in ShapeCutter to do booleans, mm -hmm. but you have VDBs as well on APF. APF, if you set it to shape distance. Yeah, um, APF stands for? All purpose fields. All purpose fields. So uh, basically, volume fields. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Volumetric fields. Uh, and it's, but, it's again voxel uh, data that you can fill with vector uh, vector information exactly. this time, not float information. So you can get velocities. Yeah. Or, or and anything. then there, I think that they call it margin, and the margin actually yes, is a that, band. Yeah. So you can see for the distance field, um, we have, well, three voxels. It's actually four voxels outside, four voxels inside. And I can increase that. Uh, 
on the outside. There you go, and it just popped one more. And then the same for the inside. And if I would fill the interior, we just fill the whole thing. Um, yeah. So that about VDBs, volumes, sparse volumes, awesome. and SDFs. We I can hope have, you guys learned something. We can have these scenes available to download with all the other scenes that we have with uh, effective uh, TDs, um, BDB versus, I know, TP versus Houdini. Maybe. I mean, I don't think the scene itself is... Uh... Well, there is quite cool stuff. I didn't know about the volume of slice and some other notes, so yeah. maybe it can be useful sure. for someone. Sure, we can show you. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.